Well, you guys like to use curved needles. Uh, I don't because it's somewhat of a struggle because I use all fives, but I guarantee you you can use a five millimeter trocar and still use an SH needle. And all of you are going to show me how you do that. I'm not going to tell you, you're going to figure it out. Handling this is a little bit different. It's mounted different. It's mounted about an inch or two behind the swedge. Most of the manipulation of the uh, orientation of the needle is done by handling the suture rather than the needle. It rocks back and forth very nicely. Here I'm going to actually cheat and do it the other way because I like doing it that way. And now, again, the, the needle is perpendicular to the sewing hand and about two-thirds of the way back, just like you normally like to have it. And this is just to show you that you don't need self-writing needle drivers to do any of this. It's just a matter of, you know, being careful and using your hands. We'll use an SH needle probably one of 100, maybe one of 150 times that we sew. Just don't have a big need for it. If you do it like that, you're all set. Now, when it comes to tying a knot, an integral portal knot, you don't have a line that you can get parallel to your looping hand, but you can almost fake it a little bit. What we're going to do is manipulate that needle by manipulating the, the, the suture material, bringing that tail, remember, we want the tail kind of short. If you, most of you, 90% of the folks that do this, the, the, the first mistake they make is the tail is too long and it gets lost. So although it's not parallel to this, you can see there's a nice space, a nice loop. So you want to get kind of close to the tip of the needle on the SH. I'm going to bring it out just a little bit more and change the angle so I could see better. And again, now I have this circle in which I can pass my instrument for an instrument tie. Because that's all this is, remember, is an instrument tie. Don't get bogged down that it's anything other than an instrument tie. Nice little surgeon's knot. Bring both hands over together. Really critical. That's the other mistake a lot of folks make in the lab. They bring one hand over, and the next thing you know, it's off, and they have to go re-grab it again. Remember to cross them. Cross them. See, I didn't listen to myself. That lays that lays it down flat and square. Remember to keep the tail short. And the best way to do that is get the, de get the length of the tail you want and bring this hand e off field if you have to. Grab the suture if you have to, but keep the tail short. If the tail is too long, for one, you're going to run out of suture. For two, you're not going to find it because it's going to be stuck up someplace off field. You have to go searching with the camera. Waste time, waste effort. It gets you frustrated. Now we'll just go to real time with this. Back the other way, both hands go over together. And just because they were right over the right spot, it made it really easy. And I think I'll throw one more just for good luck. Want to make that angle a little bit bigger. Nope, I got room. And I actually, I mean, they actually do touch the instruments to each other. It seems to facilitate getting, getting that through. All done. Ah, the endo stitch. You'll learn more and better how to tie with the endo stitch in the lab than you will on here. I don't use the endo stitch, so I was doing my best. But it's, it's a great device for running, and it's a great device for really quick intracorporeal knot tying. Um, whenever you use the endo stitch, you know, it's got the little toggle thing on. If you don't know how to use it, we'll show you over there. Um, again, with this, pull through. And this, you don't actually need a short tail. What you want to do to make the tie is you make a loop. And one way to make a loop is just grab it on the jaw of, of the, the, the opposing jaw. And then you bring the, the, the stitch into the jaws, Thomas, into the jaws. Thank you. There you go. And then toggle. Toggle across. That brings it through. Close the device if you're going to pull it. And you can do it over and over and over again to make your loops. Close the device as you pull it, and there's your tie. So all you need to do is make a loop. That's one way to make a loop. Just kind of use that as sort of a bow and arrow toggle. Now you bring the stitch through the hole, close, and down. And once you get good at this, it, I mean, it's like a sewing machine. I've seen Nin Win do this, you know, just amazingly quickly. It's
ka ching ka ching ka ching ka ching ka ching And it's really great for the end of a running stitch because you have to hold up the loop in the air and tie around it. And actually, once you get the hang of it, it's actually kind of fun. I just like needles and regular needle holders and stuff, so I don't use this very often.